Captain's Log, V-29, March 8th, 1940. For the past several weeks, my ship, the V-29, has been part of a task force. This task force, consisting of eight destroyers, is to execute a daring raid against the port of New Haven. This port, strategically located very close to the English Channel, is poorly defended. A light cruiser and a destroyer are all that stands in the way of an attack on the port facilities. By raiding this port, the Admiralty believes that the British will be unable to keep as big of a presence in the English Channel, which will allow us to strike even more of their ports. We are currently 15 minutes out from the time of attack. From the bridge, I can see the V-34 and the V-37 in the distance. The entire task force is operating under radio silence until we're given the order to fire. My crew, although inexperienced, is eager to strike a blow directly at the British mainland. A victory here will surely spur them on and keep them motivated until the next encounter with the Royal Navy. Hey guys, Stealth here and welcome back to the second episode of this destroyer-only campaign. I have 75 destroyers, two of which are currently undergoing repairs, but the rest of them are all functional and in, well, trying to do sea control. Currently, the British have fewer ships, but since they have bigger ships, their power projection is 74,000 versus my little less than 5,000. So I hope to take down a couple of their ships early and often. Now, let's have a group strike against this port. We're going to go after New Haven. Um, interestingly, this is a mission that I haven't done before, because the port strikes were introduced fairly recently. And apparently, if you win this battle, we can damage their facilities. So let's have a go. If I'm not mistaken, this is going to be a mix between the existing or between the, the gunboat destroyers and the torpedo destroyers. It's just going to be an issue of uh, what is what, what, what ship is doing what. This is the the, the Fletcher Light <laughs> of sorts, the V43 design, and we got one screening. No, 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 no. You're going to go with Div Two. All right, we're going to spread these guys out. I want to have the enemy to the northwest over there. Okay. Uh, that means that the other screening force... Oh, God, they're completely messed up. Okay. Uh, V-34 and V-60. You are going to follow the V-60. So we have this little group of two. V-64 is going to be joined by V-43. You're going to go that way, and you're going to go sort of that way. Uh, nobody's allowed to torpedo unless I tell them to. Because I want to have a go at that light cruiser and, well, their protectees, their transports. All the ships can currently do 37 knots. Let's have a go. At a mere 7 kilometers, the enemy finally pops up in the form of a transport. Now, what I found interesting about this mission is that we have an almost 5-hour time limit. That is a lot of time. Good lord, this thing exploded almost. Okay, so that's one of the transports eliminated. Now let's have a go at the light cruiser, which is hiding somewhere deeper down. I think the other transport's over here. There. And your light cruiser and destroyer are, for some reason, AI programming, uh, not really doing a whole lot to try and protect it. There. About 9 kilometers out is the light cruiser. I hate that I still cannot detect it. They can spot me, probably because their radar is higher up. There is your other destroy. Sorry, no, your transport. The V60 design uh, is the Fletcher Light. And this is a capital ship hunter with all the torpedoes. Now, the amount of gunfire that this ship is taking is pretty despicable. Uh, there is very little that that thing can do. <laughs> Against destroyers, sorry, against transports, these destroyers just absolutely wreck them. Now I need to sink all of them. And now we can finally get a look at the light cruiser that's been haunting me from afar. These are the ships that have all of those torpedo launchers. Um, as well as 12 6-inch guns and a bunch of 2s. It's favorable that they don't have any 4-inch guns, because that could mean, well, not certain death, but at least... Uh, pretty definite concern. Let's see, range is 9-3. Uh, 
Just the sheer amount of high explosive fire might be able to overcome this light cruiser. Just to be sure, I'm going to put my ships to auto dodge. Even though they tend to do some really weird shit. But it's better than getting hit by a torpedo. Um, I'm going to set the destroyers to high explosive. Because I don't expect that at th this angle, I can really do that much with the pen. What? Flooding? You poor thing. Are you one of those thin-skinned British DDs again? Oh, sorry, British CLs, light cruiser. How? How are you dying this quickly? Yes, it's a lot of 5-inch shell fire. Yes, I'm firing super heavy shells. Uh, no, I'm not even firing super heavy shells. What is your concern? Did you get all the torpedoes but none of the armor? This thing is getting pretty nicely wrecked. That is very good news because the destroyers are going to have to contend with, I think, about 30 light cruisers from the Brits. Okay, they just torped another DD. Yeah, the V-43 immediately goes off of its rocker and decides that turning around... Boys! If you were just following my lead ship, you'd be fine. You don't need to go haywire. You really don't. What? The V-37 has a 99% chance to pen? Wow. 1.2 inches of main belt, 0 fore belt, 0 aft belt, 0 main deck, 0 fore deck, 0 aft deck. 0 superstructure. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, that would explain it. They did go with a lot of torpedo tubes. But uh, they're mostly harmless. Well, no. Uh, they're mostly unarmored. They're not necessarily harmless. So, yeah, if you got no armor, I am definitely going to go with high explosive. Because that way I can do a lot more damage. Flooding... Dude. 43, where are you going? Come on, buddy. Get back here. We have light cruisers to kill. I also have no idea, actually, where the destroyer is. It has to be... Whoa, let's not do that. There. There. All of these ships are sort of letting themselves fight it out single formation, single file. Not a great plan. Hello! Jesus. Well, it's better than having a whole load of ships coming down for repairs, I suppose. Can you torpedo the lion? Or do we no longer need to torpedo the lion? Whatever, we got the quintuple torpedo launchers. That ought to give them something else to worry about. They fan out pretty nicely. Yeah, that light cruiser's toast. That thing is properly screwed. Oh, really? You already went down before the torpedoes even made it? Yep, you're proper dead. Okay. Next up, the destroyer. And the battle? Yeah, I don't think so. We're going to do a port strike. I have no idea what sort of result that actually yields. But I do want to get at the destroyer. Which is about 10.4 clicks out. How can you spot me? Oh, it's the lion. The lion is still considered a spotter for their fleet. And thereby the destroyer is getting information from the lion as to where my ships are. That ought to end pretty soon. Something spotted the V64, but I haven't spotted it. Generation 2 radar with the best tower I can get, and I cannot spot the destroyer? The hell? Sadly, the British destroyer turns out to be just way too fast. These ships can do 44 knots, which is 7 knots faster than my ships can do. 
And it turns out that this guy just made it out of the battle. Which is sad, because it has zero armor, and thereby it could be pretty easily destroyed. Especially considering all the guns that I have. At any rate, we got a bit of crew training done on all of my ships, and thereby also sinking a light cruiser. What is the outcome of the port strike? Our naval superiority led us close to New Haven. If we defeat their naval forces, we can damage their facilities with a bombardment. Yes, port damage to New Haven. 6,071. Okay. That doesn't eliminate their power projection. Do you mean that the port capacity is now less? That might be it. The port capacity might be a little less. Alright, time to hunt down some invaders. Large convoy defense. We have nine transports to defend with a mere three destroyers. And the Estrella and the Tornado are coming right at us. This is going to be probably a race for the light cruiser. Enemy smoke west. West, that's where we're going. Considering that the game is playing at times 30 speed, that means that we don't have to worry about getting shot instantly. Especially the destroyers don't have to worry about getting shot instantly. What's radar telling us? Ping 22 kilometers out. Okay. A little while later, we have contact with the enemy, and it is, of course, one of those very fragile light cruisers. So, if I can just lob a bunch of high explosive at it, there is a pretty good chance that I'll be able to inflict some flooding, slowing it down, and then hunting it down further with torpedoes. Because lobbing torpedoes at it now is probably not going to work out too well, considering that they have a pretty good warning system, and that they are very capable of turning away. V-59, if you were to run into that torpedo, I would be pretty upset. Whoa, speaking of, this is going to be a bit of a torpedo dance, I think. Let's get you that way. Let's get you that way-ish. 339, over to starboard and back to port. Six clicks. Okay, you're good. You need to dance this way. Listen to your rudder. Idiot. Focus fire on the destroyer. We're going to take that thing out first. And you, you're also fine. Okay, excellent. Very nice. You're going to have a run at the destroyer. Oh, sorry, at the light cruiser. All those torpedo tubes and a fragile light cruiser should be a nice recipe for disaster for the British. Let's have you also pitch in your torpedoes. You're also a capital ship hunter. And the 59 is a Fletcher-esque. Okay, torpedoes out. That at least ought to give the light cruiser some pause. Switch target to the light cruiser. It's too close. You're going to speed up to flank. You're going to speed up to flank. And I have smoke screens for about another 90 seconds. The destroyer really isn't that much of a threat. It's more so that... What? Oh, fuck's sake. It's more so that the issue is... I can't catch it if that thing decides to leave. The Estrella has detected the torpedoes and is making a turn to starboard. And if she continues to make that turn, she should be fine. Oh. P-39 cannot launch torpedoes, but the 59 can. Turn. Flooding. There you go. Punch some more holes in the Estrella. Whoa! These things always have more torpedoes ready, it seems. Jesus, a light cruiser is getting destroyed by a bunch of 5-inch and even 4-inch guns. Dead. <laughs> Okay, both of you, after the V-39 is done, all three of you, we're going to hunt down the tornado and wipe out this attack on our convoy. Our economy is under pressure as is, and I really don't need help from the British destroying my transport ships. Tornado was completely out of torpedoes. 
all one of it. Sorry, two of them. They have one reload. Fifty-nine. If you have a torpedo solution, just fire it. And the tornado is going to turn to starboard, which is good because it puts her closer to the V-59. Whoa, 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 whoa. Dude. When in doubt, you are the torpedo. Hello. Shall we not engage in this extremely close, close quarters dance? That'd be lovely. Thank you. I didn't actually ram it, but geez, that was close. Thankfully, friendly ramming damage is not a thing. Turn. Obey my commands. Turn to port. Get all the torpedoes away against the tornado, because she might not be able to dodge that at this angle. Where are you at? Here. Go. Come on. Now you're a little late. One spread out. Is that it? Wow, that is pretty little cluster. Oh, there's the rest, but the ship was already in a turn. I usually turn when torpedoes are coming to me, or when I know that a ship is trying to get a torpedo solution. And they always miss. What? Torpedo attack from the light cruiser. Anyway, as I was saying, um, the AI simply does not know how to figure out what to do when a ship is turning. The torpedo solution just completely gets wrecked. You don't hit anything. Now, this guy normally is very quick. But with two engines out, she should be a lot more manageable. There you go, 31 knots. Completely devoid of armor. I'm not a very big fan of this design. Just two four inch guns, one torpedo tube. I'm not sure what the function is of this ship. Convoy Raider? Maybe? But if the convoy happens to have guns on it, then you're shit out of luck. There you go, extensive fire. Convoy saved. We may proceed with the rest of the mission. Done. Okay, who would like to go next? We are minus 26 million monthly balance. That's probably because I'm fixing up a few of my DDs, which are then pumping out four, uh, sorry, 5.3 million in expenses. Yeah, I got four destroyers coming back from repairs. They will be all in the Baltics, so let's have some of the ships. Yeah, see? All of you, off you go. Another 11 destroyers there. We're going to go all to Wilhelmshaven, off you trot. There. Kiel, 10 destroyers. Um, not sure we can fit all those. Well, apparently, yes. Let's go. Ambush. We're ambushing the heavy cruiser Argonaut. Let's have a go. If I'm not mistaken, then the V-16 is one of the gunboat destroyers, so this should be an interesting fight. Um, V-16, yes, 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 yes. This is one of those 21 in, uh, sorry, 21 guns gunboats. Very, very potent warship. V-37, you're going to be joined by number 16. There, you're going to go that way. Nobody drop a torp. You're going to be a single operator. Oops. How heavily is that thing armed? Interesting. They pulled a reverse Nelson design. Although the Nelson didn't have a stern turret, but this thing has most of its firepower on the stern and very little in the bows. So cut and cross in front of it. And you might not have to worry about it too much. 
Interesting. Okay, you're getting attacked. I'm a bit hesitant to go with the torpedoes, but... Well, I have them. Might as well use them. This ship, too, seems to be very susceptible to high explosive fire. Go. Ow! Good lord. That hurt. I want to ID this thing so I know whether it's an okay move to drop torps at it. 93, 95. Whoops. It's one of their speedy destroyers. Argonauts, tell me what you got. Cramped quarters, few bulkheads, 31.6. Very good turning circle. If we're going to torpedo that thing, it's going to be right in their face. They have an empty torp 5. Holy shit. What did you have to give up to get anti torp 5? Nothing. Advanced radio, generation 1 radar, diesel engines, auxiliary 4. Wow. They could have even improved the armor because they got Krupp 1. Still, they might have a lot of bulkheads. Sorry, they might have a lot of uh, torpedo protection. But in essence, I only need to hurt that thing once. Because then it'll start flooding and then the rest of the wolves <laughs> can catch up and get it. Everybody, load the high explosive. Damn it. Let's disengage with the 37. Might also make management of the 16 easier. You're going to go back. You're going to go there. Listen to me. <laughs> Sailing gun platform. Which is unusual for a destroyer. Every 9.8 seconds I can fire three shells from one of these turrets. And I can do that seven times. Could you not? I'm going to try and force the Argonaut to turn away. Torpedoes out from the 44. Come on, we're going to wreck the Lyra. Lyra? And make sure that she's no longer an issue. I suspect that the heavy cruiser has instantly detected the torps with their Sonar 2 equipment. Well, she's not giving me any indication that she's turning away yet. This thing is going to burn to a crisp. Good. This is cutting it pretty close for the Argonaut. Yeah, 4% buoyancy. Go on. No, the Argonaut's fine. Lyra, however, is not. What's our chance to pen? 36%. Oh, come on. There. Okay. Let's rain down high explosive, because they might have a lot of anti torp but they don't have a lot of bulkheads, which means susceptibility to high explosive shell fire. Uh, detach everybody. You're going to go that way, that way, that way. I said that way. Let's not do that, shall we? Or at least not you. I'd rather I be the one to drop torps. We seem to be barely capable of damaging the Argonaut at this angle. I'm sure, some fires are helping out, but it's not enough. A2 does not have a smoke screen anymore. Okay. I want you to torp the Argonaut. I know that's potentially risky to the 69, but I want to force her to turn. Ideally, to port. 
which she's doing. She probably spotted those torps. Sixty-four percent left. Torpedoes away from the sixty-nine. Sixty percent structural left. She's starting to burn. Yeah, now she might have messed up. Because what I'm trying to do is sort of pincer her into getting very close to the 22 and 16. So I can make the torpedo attack work. At this angle, we should be able to get some pretty decent AP pens. Not you, though. You? Yes. Go on. Get your torpedo launcher to fire. Go on. Range, 800 meters out. Torpedoes. Go on. Do it. Seriously, get it done. Torpedo the bastard. 800 meters out. The torpedo launcher is fine. Sixteen. See if you can do better. How expensive are these things? Seventy-three million? Wow. Not sure why, but my destroyers, especially the gunboats, flat out refuse to launch the torpedoes. Which is going to make this a lot more difficult than I was hoping. And also opens up the chance that I'll take a lot more damage. Go on. She is starting to flood. If there, torpedoes away. Finally, the 22 decided to listen to my orders. And that could be the end of the Argonaut. Because your torpedo damage will not be so high, so your structural integrity, well, it didn't outright kill you. But your buoyancy is not keeping up. Courtesy of few bulkheads. So that's the job done. And that means that in this episode I've sunk two light cruisers and a heavy cruiser. And we are starting to rack up the victory points. Some of our ships did take some damage, so I suppose that the repair bill is going to be pretty hefty again. But... We have 2400 victory points versus 581, so we're about five times as many. Uh, yeah, right. Undefended convoy. No, I'm going to pass on that. Although, what destroyer is that? 29. That's a capital ship hunter, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, four times five torpedo tubes. This is not the right ship to engage a convoy with. All right, I'm going to leave you here at this episode. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you have enjoyed it, and I'll see you soon for the next, in which we continue to harass the British ships, hopefully encountering, well, something a little bigger. I would like to sink a battleship, or at least damage it heavily. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon for the next one.